Hello students, welcome to my channel Learning History Made Easy. In today's video, I will be explaining about the Kushanas. Before getting into the video, if anyone is seeing the channel for the first time or if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and share it with your friends and also click the bell button to receive notifications whenever I upload new videos. So without wasting time, let us get into today's video. So as I have told to you, today's videos, video is about the Kushanas. The Kushanas. So regarding the Kushanas, the Parthians were followed by the Kushanas. Okay, so before the Kushanas, there were the Parthians, as we learned in the last video. The Parthians were followed by uh, the Kushanas. And the Kushanas, they were also called as Yuchis. Okay, they were also called as Yuchis or Tocharians. Tocharians. Uh, that was what Kushanas were called. That is Yuchi tribe from which they came. They were called as Yuchis or Tocharians. The Kushanas was one of the five tribes in which Yuchi tribe was divided. So as I have told, the Yuchis were a tribe. And they were divided into five and Kushanas were one among them. The Kushanas, they first occupied Bactria. So when we see about the Kushanas, they first occupied, they first occupied Bactria or North Afghanistan, North Afghanistan, where they displaced the Shakas. So in Bactria, the Shakas were ruling and the Kushanas came and they occupied Bactria. The first dynasty was founded by the House of Chiefs uh, who were called as Catfishes. Catfishes, they ruled for 28 years. Okay, so Catfishes, the first dynasty was founded by this House of Chiefs and they ruled for 28 years. The first was Catfishes 1. The first among them was Catfishes 1. And who issued coins of uh, South Hind Kush and minting copper coins in imitation of uh, Roman coins. So he was the one who issued coins South of Hind Kush and imitating the Roman coins. After Catfishes 1, the second king was Catfishes 2. Okay, so Catfishes 2. He issued a large number of gold money. Okay. So he issued a large number of gold money and he spread his kingdom to the east of Indus. So that was the second ruler that is Cadphysis 2. Uh, so first Cadphysis 1 came then Cadphysis 2. And the abundance of so here gold coins were there and also copper coins were there. The abundance of these gold and copper coins it indicate the prosperity of the Kushana Empire. This shows that the Kushanas were very prosperous. Okay, the abundance of gold and silver coins. And during this time, there was brisk trade. Trade was happening in silk, then in spices, and also in other articles. And this trade was carried on between India and uh, China. And also the Roman Empire between India and China and Roman Empire there was brisk trade which was happening in silk spices other articles etc the kings extended the Kushana power over upper India and the lower Indus basin so now a Kushana power Kushana power extended and this was extended, that is, the house of Cadphysis was succeeded by that of Kanishka. Okay, so this extending of the empire was done by Kanishka, who was uh, the person who uh, succeeded the house of Cadphysis. Under Kanishka, the Kushana empire flourished. So the Kushana empire reached the top of its power under Kanishka. So under Kanishka, the Kushana empire flourished. Now what was the speciality of Kanishka? So let us see that. So it, we have already studied that under Kanishka, the Kushana empire had flourished. And he started an era, that era in 78 AD, which is known as Shaka era. 
So Kanishka, he started an era in 78 AD which is now known as Shaka era and this is used by the government of India. Okay, so this was started by Kanishka. The Kushana Empire reached its power under Kanishka and in India his power extended as far as south as Sanchi. Okay, as far as south as Sanchi the power of Kanishka extended. And as far as east as Banaras, as far as south as Sanchi and as, as far as east as Banaras, the power of Kushanas under Kanishka extended. And in Central Asia also his dominion was extensive. So his um, uh, power extended in Central Asia also. So now just let us go through the points which we have studied till now. So the Kushanas, the Parthians were followed by the Kushanas who are also called Yuchis or Tocharians. The Kushanas were one of the five tribes in which the Yuchi tribe was divided. The Kushanas first occupied Bactria or North Afghanistan where they displaced the Shakas. The first dynasty was founded by a house of chiefs who were called Catfishes who ruled for 28 years. The first was Catfishes I who issued coins south of Hindukush minting copper coins in imitation of Roman coins. The second king was Catfishes II who issued a large number of gold money and spread his kingdom east of the Indus. The abundance of gold and copper coins indicated the prosperity of Kushana Empire. During this time, a brisk trade in silk, spices and other articles were carried on between India and China and the Roman Empire. The house of Catfishes was succeeded by that of Kanishka. Its kings extended the Kushana power over Upper India and the Lower Indus Basin. Under Kanishka, the Kushana dynasty flourished. Kanishka started an era in 78 AD which is now known as the Shaka era and is used by the government of India. The Kushana empire reached its height of power under Kanishka. In India, his suzerainty extended as far as Sanchi and as far as east as Banaras. In Central Asia, his dominion was extensive. Now just let us uh, continue with the points regarding uh, Kanishka. So the Kushana Empire, the capital Purushapura, Purushapura was the capital, was Kanishka's capital and Mathura was the second important uh, city of his empire. Okay, it was the second important city of the empire. Purushapura was the capital and Mathura was the second most important city of the empire. And when we say about Kanishka, he is often remembered in his association with Buddhism. So he convened the fourth Buddhist council. When we have studied about Buddhism, we have learned that the fourth Buddhist council was convened in Kashmir and where the doctrines of Mahayana form of Buddhism was finalized. Mahayana form of Buddhism's doctrines were finalized in the fourth Buddhist council. It was held at Kashmir and it was conducted by Kanishka. He encouraged missionary activities and the Buddhist missions were sent to Central Asia and China. So he sent Buddhist missions, okay, missionaries uh, to Central Asia as well as China. So he encouraged a lot of missionary activities. And the age of Kanishka also saw the execution of the best work in Gandhara style of art. Okay, the Gandhara style of art also developed or it, the age of Kanishka witnessed the execution of the Gandhara style of art. So it is said that uh, about Kanishka, it is said that uh, he constructed uh, the at Peshawar. Okay, at Peshawar he constructed a multi-storied lyric multi-storied relic was constructed by him relic tower and this relic tower consists uh, enshrined the relic of buddha enshrined the relic of buddha okay so uh, the remains uh, of 
Buddha was enshrined in this multi-storied relic which was said to have constructed by Kanishka and this construction was under the supervision of a Greek engineer and this construction under the Greek engineer Agisilas the construction was made at Peshwar. So, uh, he is said to have constructed at Peshwar. What did he construct? A multi-storied relic tower. And what did it contain? It enshrined the relic of Buddha. And this construction was under the supervision of the Greek engineer Ajisilas. Okay. So, that was the importance of uh, Kanishka. Uh, that is the greatest Kushana ruler. Now, the Chinese uh, traveler, that is Huen Sang, we already learned about Huen Sang, the Chinese traveler. He came to India in the 7th century uh, and he gave a lot of details about this stupa, details of this stupa. Okay, the Chinese traveler. Uh, Huen San who came to India in 7th century gives detailed account of this stupa and Kanishka built a tower another construction he built a tower near Takshila and the city of Kanishkapura city of Kanishkapura that also in Kashmir Kashmir was probably found by him and his rule lasted for 23 years and after Kanishka, his successors, if we see the successors of Kanishka was uh, Vasishka, okay, Vasishka, who had a short term reign and was succeeded by another ruler, Huvishka. Okay, so first Kanishka was there, he was the greatest ruler. His immediate successor, Vasishka, but he had a very short rule and then succeeded by Huvishka. But the last great uh, Kushana ruler, if you see, was Vasudeva one. Okay, can be said about the last great Kushana ruler. Now, uh, if you consider the rule of uh, Kushanas, the Kushanas coins, uh, their inscriptions, okay, their coins, their inscriptions, their constructions, etc. Coins, inscriptions, constructions, sculpture all found at Mathura. Mathura is the second most important city we have studied. Show that it was their second capital. Okay, this shows it was not only an important city, it was their second capital. The first being Purushapura. We have already studied about Purushapura. And Kanishka's successors continued to rule in northwest India. Northwest India, his successors continued to rule for about uh, AD 230. And the decline of Kushana power in Northwest was hastened by the rise of Sasanian dynasty. Okay, by the coming of Sasanian dynasty, dynasty, the Kushana power started to decline, and that was the end of the Kushanas. So, just let us quickly go through the points. Purushapura was his capital and Mathura was the second most important city of the empire. Kanishka is often remembered for his association with Buddhism. He convened the fourth Buddhist council in Kashmir where the doctrines of the Mahayana form of Buddhism were finalized. He encouraged missionary activities and Buddhist missions were sent to Central Asia and China. The age of Kanishka witnessed the execution of the best work in Gandhara style. He is said to have constructed at Peshwar the multi-storied relic tower, ensuring the relic of the Buddha under the supervision of a Greek engineer, Agisilius. The Chinese traveler Huen Sang, who came to India in the 7th century, gave detailed account of the stupa. Kanishka built a tower near Taxila and the city of Kanishkapura in Kashmir probably owed its foundation to him. Kanishka's rule lasted for 23 years. His immediate successor was Vasishka who had a short reign and was succeeded by Huvishka. The last great Kushana king was Vasudeva I. Kushana coins, inscription, constructions and pieces of sculpture found at Mathura show that it was a second capital in India. The first being Purushapura for Peshwar where Kanishka erected a monastery and a huge stupa or relic tower which excited the wonder of foreign travellers. Kanishka's successors continued to rule in northwest India till about AD 230. The decline of the Kushana power in the northwest was hastened by the rise of Sasanian dynasty of Persia in the 3rd century AD.
so all these were the important points regarding the kushanas so i hope you have understood all these points very clearly in case of any doubts please do ask in the comment section and also don't like don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel your likes and shares will be of a great encouragement for me to make more and more videos so i hope to see you all soon in the coming video thank you for watching